Hi guys, this is Devansh. So we have cap we have covered data model, star data model, snowflake data model, and few more things, including cardinality. Let us uh, let us also try to understand the data flow in the data model. Okay. For that, let me take you back in our model view. If you're using the previous previous versions of Power BI, I think they, they called it relationship view. Now, as we are in model view, I told you this one is not the level one, right? This is one to many. The way, the way I explained to you what is cardinality, it is one to many connection, right? Now, if you look at every time the data is flowing in a particular direction, correct? In each and every case, it is connected from dimension to fact. See this arrow? Calendar is dimension. See, this is our, right, right now we have two facts. One is sales, one is return. So from dimension to fact, dimension to fact, dimension to fact, dimension to fact, indirectly. So if you see one to many, and then product is connected from here. Don't get confused with this. Let me drag a little down. Okay. So this is one to many. This arrow is for this. Okay. And again, product product is connected to returns, dimension to fact. And calendar is connected to returns, dimension to fact. Calendar is also connected to sales, dimension to fact. Territory is connected to sales, dimension to fact. Territory is connected to returns, then direction is again dimension to fact. Which means data is flowing this way, which also means data cannot flow backward, correct? So this is a one way data flow that we have created. Let us assume that what if I create a two-way data flow. But before we jump onto two-way data flow, let us try to understand that how the data flow actually impacts the overall BI, overall business intelligence that we are creating. Now, let's take a ex smaller example of territory, sales, and returns. Now, if you look at if you look at this connection, we have three straightforward connection. With territory, it's connected to sales and it's connected to return. Now, territory, which is a dimension, is connected to sales as well as with returns. These both are facts, which has which is data, right? And this is dimension. Now if you take a look here, it is sales territory key. We have territory key in sales facts also, and we have territory key in our returns also, correct? Now, let us try to understand what if we use the filter from sales or from returns, which means I'm saying, what if we use the filter, the primary filter from the facts? instead of dimension, okay? Let's do one by one for all three. For that, we need to go back to reports. And let me go to territory. Let me, so right now, if you don't get confused, if you don't see that our uh, fields where we have to drop our uh, facts or dimension uh, parameters, we can easily get it back if we just click on this area, okay? This, everything is contextual. If I click on this area, you see, I've got my fields back. So let me remove gender. It's gone from here. Now from territory, 
let me pick sales directory from here and drop it in rows okay so if you see i picked territory sales territory key from territory which is the dimension and i have got this i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten territories order quantity and return quantity our returns from sales directory two and three are nil okay let me take a screenshot of this and paste that in paint for our future reference now what i want to do is i want to demo you what if i remove sales directory key from here and i pick the sales territory key or the territory key from return now if you see it is not giving me the right data exactly the same dem i'm giving the same demo which i had given you during data modeling in detail i'm just going a little faster right now so it is just giving us the same number correct now what and if you see 2 and 3 are gone 2 and 3 are gone because there is no territory which is captured in returns table in this table from where we have picked the territory key as the primary filter key in this table territory 2 and 3 are not captured because there was no return there was no item returned in these two territories that is why we don't see that over here correct and if you look at order quantity now let's go back now order quantity is showing the same number again and again the reason being if you see we don't have a direct connection between returns and sales data right both are the facts table we have not established any direct connection between them we cannot for territory key to territory key it will be multiple to multiple many to many relationship that is not possible so that is why we are seeing this data right over here now what if i remove territory key from returns and pick territory key from sales table now you see from sales table i am getting the right order quantity i am getting right order quantity because it's part of this but i am not getting the return quantity the reason being there is no return quantity here return quantity is right over here and i am not getting the right number because again the same reason the sales and the return table return facts are not connected so we need to uncheck this we need to go to proper sorry territories the dimension and pick the right feel from here and now we are getting the right data accurate data now to stop people from picking up the incorrect feel what i can do i can go here and i can click on territory key on returns and i can delete from model which i don't want to do i can hide in report view okay and i can go to the sales table sales facts and with okay here is trick i can right click hide in report view i don't want my user to use these two keys to filter out the result i want them to use territory key that way now if i if you go to return you see there is no territory key in this if you go to sales you see there is no territory key over here right only in under territories we see the territory key correct so this is how you hide you can also hide by just going to the table view not selected in table you go to return table you see it's already hidden i can right click on this and i can hide 
unhide all hide in report queue i don't want to do that that was for the demo purpose so you can actually hide the parameter on the basis of which you don't want the user to filter or for some other reason also if you want to hide you have to you, have, you can go ahead and hide let's go back to relationship view now i demoed you that how it is important to understand the data flow now this all data flow is a single data flow what if i create a double layer data flow or two way data flow returns to territories let me double click on this cross filter direction i can click this and i click on both now there is a two way data flow which is happening between territories and returns okay let me unhide this let me unhide this all right now if we look go back to now it looks like the correct number that we have now what if i change this to we have returns and we have territories uh, to be right let's go back this return and this is territory let me cross this let me go to return let me put the territory over here now you see we are getting the right we are getting the right number but we don't have 2 and 3 so for an untrained eye it will look like we have the right right numbers but it it will not be actually the right data now let's go back to the relationship view and make it a single direction and let's change this let's make it a two way data flow for sales and territory let's double click make it bold make it okay okay now we have a two way relationship for sales and territory now let's take a look at the chart now let's pull out this territory queue from returns and add the territory queue from sales right here now we have now got the right data but my suggestion is not to use two way data flow it will become very confusing it creates lot of problem instead of following it might solve one problem it will create another two three problems okay all right let's go back to chart and uh, remove this and put the right you are here okay all right guys hope you are very clear with the data flow for any kind of confusion you can drop me a mail here my mail id drdevanshadyao.com that is devanshadyao.com as well as i had given this one earlier all right guys thank you so much i'll see you in the next session bye bye Hi guys, this is Devans. So now, till now we have learned about basic features of uh, Power BI. We have learned how to load data, transform data, multiple ways. We have learned how to transform data. We have learned different types of data modeling. We have learned about uh, uh, structuring our data flow, different types of data flow, one way, two way, right? uh we are moving ahead on visualization but before visualization we see that we have only two data fields uh, or two facts one is from sales and the one is for returns let's let's enhance our data let's add a few more fields while doing that we will also learn how easy it is to write the queries in power bi okay so just to start with uh let's so this is how our uh, snowflake data model looks like i've just arranged it before we go ahead let me show you a few more things so 
to cross it. See this layout. Let's say um, I want to see only the data model that we have for returns table. Right now, this is our entire data model, right? So I will click on this plus sign, new layout. I will go to fields and I want to see how returns is functioning. What is the data model for returns? I'll drag returns here and if I know what connections I made, I can build it here. But let's assume this the, the, the real data model was built by somebody else and I just want to see what is the data model done for returns. So I can just click here, right click and add related tables, boom, we're done. Now let me arrange it for you so that it's easy to visualize. And this is how it looks like. This is our returns data model. Now if you come back to see, come back to see here in all tables. Now you see for returns, we have one data pipeline that is from products. So we have products and then we have this table which is calendar and then we have territory. So product, calendar and territory. If I come back here, we have product, calendar and territory for returns. Similarly, if I want to add, if I want to see the data model for sales, I can just drag drop here, fill it a little up, related tables, done. Now if you see, the one of the reason I wanted to do this is to show you that sales table has no direct connection with returns table. See that? One of the slight drawback of this way of uh, recreating the data model or the specific data model for a particular uh, fact is it will not give us the details of the snowflake. It does not tell us the indirect data modeling or indirect data connection data pipeline that we have built, right? Like you don't see the customer subcategory, customer category, sorry not customer, it's a product subcategory and product category, you don't see it over here, right? So that's a slight drawback, but otherwise, if I just want to see the uh, real structuring of any of the fact, it is an extremely easier way to do it. Now I can, if I need to delete it, I can just simply cross it like this, cross it like this, done. And I come here and I click on save. Okay, now let us say I want to add a table. I want to add a column in my sales data. So these are the tables that I have. I am already under sales. If you are on some other table, you can, you can just click on it. And I want to add a table for order quantity. So to add a column, what I can do, I can click over here. Here I have three options. I want to create a new table altogether or I want to add a new measure or a new column or a quick measure. We will be focusing on new column this time. Let's say I want to add a new column. I will tell you what is the new measure is. Okay, this is the same concept if you're using Tableau, it is exactly the same concept. So let's click on new column. Now you see as I am under sales table, it has added a column over here under sales table itself. Now, let's say I want to name my column as, um, I want to build this column to find out whether my order quantity is multiple or let's say working in Amazon. And uh, you, Amazon wants to find out that what is the order quantity in like how many people, what percentage of people are ordering in multiple or in single item, right? For that, I need I need everyone who has ordered just one quantity is single and above one is multiple. So it's as simple as the way we write in Excel, right? Let me name that as hmm,
order quantity multiple okay equals if I hit tab because I'm an Excel user so I'll hit tab logical test if what if order quantity I was about to write order quantity but the intelligence of Power BI tells me there are four options which starts with order and I can use a down arrow or tab I'm using down arrow to come to order quantity and I hit a tab and it's auto selected so you see the formula order quantity from sales table 2017 is selected so my variable name is this which I'm going to create if order quantity of from this sales table is greater than one then you return me multiple but it's not going to work because multiple is a word it's a character so I need to put that under inverted comma return me multiple otherwise otherwise what if if it is not a multiple then otherwise single okay and I close this and I hit enter working on it now you see I have so this is single order quantity is one now if I come down still one come down okay the easier way is I can uncheck on my single I will have only multiple so any anything which is above one is returning me multiple this is how easy it is okay we have to understand that calculated columns are typically used for filtering data rather than creating a numerical value let me repeat calculated columns are used to filter the data rather than creating numerical values so this we can filter our data for multiple and single we are not creating a we are not creating a numerical value we have we had done similar thing earlier also in the customer table if you see if you go back we had created the category the demographic category right this is to filter the data right filter my customer uh, on the basis of their income level so in the same way we have created another table for filtering out my sales whether the sales is single or multiple all right now if we look at um, if you look at measures so we discussed that we have new column new table i don't want to add new table new column and new measure so basically measure is if you if you are an excel user and if you have used pivot so if you remember to create a pivot we pulled a couple of our facts or a couple of parameters in row and column field and then we have an aggregated value right it is we can either make it sum or count or average and this is the value that we see this is exactly the measure now if we filter uh, whatever pivot we have created if you put a filter on our pivot on the basis of maybe region or or some demographic factor this value will change right that value is actually the measure so as a rule of thumb we use measures against calculate column when a single row cannot give us the answer so in other words when we need to aggregate something right when we need to aggregate something we use measures so use measure to create numerical or calculated calculated value that can be analyzed in the values field of a report visual so just if if you are not able to understand just open up an excel and create a basic pivot and you'll see one extra field that you're creating the values field that is actually the uh, that's actually the measure that I'm talking about. So if, if you're still confused, uh, even after using the uh, uh, Excel pivot, uh, hang in for a while, uh, you'll get the clarity. I'll be explaining it further. Um, let me show you a pivot that I have already created for you. So let's say you have uh, 
data like this for region, for sales, and for marketing expense, and we create a pivot out of it. So if you see, we have region in as a top filter, and then we have some of marketing expense and some of sales expense. I can change it to, I want, let's say I don't want some, I want average of marketing expense. Oh. Average of marketing expense and some of sales. So we see that uh, for overall, it is this, but if I change it to only EMS, it has automatically changed, right? It has automatically changed. Now these are called these are called the measures. These are not the added column. These are the numerical field that we have built, which is completely dependent on our filters. Now this is with respect to the Excel. The similar concept that we can take forward, if you remember, let's let's go back to reports. And you see, we have already built the we have already built the measures. Now, if you just click on it, we have these fields back. You see order quantity and return quantity, right? For territory one, return quantity is 370. If you look at that, we have already created a floating field, floating numerical numerical field, which is like, when I say floating, I just mean time, but let's not get confused in the terminology. So these are the two measures that we have built, order quantity and order return quantity, sum. Okay, hope this gives you clarity that how important it is to create measures uh, whenever we have a chance, because it does not it does not add in the um, size of the data. Whereas when we are adding columns, it is actually increasing our increasing the size of the data. So always remember, it is good to have a tall, thin table than a wide short table. A wide short table is of much, uh, much larger size than a thin table, which has a lot of depth. So when, when I say thin, it means you have less number of columns. When I say wide, it means you have more number of parameters, right? We should always look ways how we can reuse the same, same column to calculate values by creating measures instead of adding calculated columns. Hope this make, makes things clear uh, for you guys in understanding what is the difference in column and measure. Now, these measures, these measures are called implicit measures because these are very specific to the view that we have created over here, right? Now, another way of, sorry, uh, one way of inserting a measure is I can click on modeling. Let me collapse things to give you a better view. Okay, let me click on modeling. Okay, before that, let me delete order quantity. Got from here. Now, let me click on modeling and click on new measure. Now, if you see, the new measure is entered over here under calendar, correct? So what happens is when you come to the modeling tab and when you click the measure from here, it will insert under the very first table, which is, which is available. Now, I don't want to do that. What I want is, this is not the right way. I want to insert a measure under sales table. So what I should do, I should click here select it, right click, and click on new measure. So the new measure which is inserted is, is right here, correct? So this is the right way of inserting a measure. So let's name it quantity sold equals sum of what? Order quantity. Okay. Press it, enter. Now 
we see that quantity sold when measured you see there's a calculated mark here which means it's a calculated field now it has come over here and what I can do is I can drag and drop under values and we have exactly the same field or, or the same numbers correct Okay, let me remove this returns quantity and add order quantity here. So you see the order quantity which is which is the column in the table is right here under sales and this is a new field quantity sold. Now you see the numbers are same, but order quantity I can use it only within this visualization, but quantity sold which is also the order quantity but it's a measure a built measure that we just built I can use it in other visualization also right so that's that's a benefit of uh, using or creating a measure instead of creating a calculated field now instead of sales territory let's take an example of product category Um, product key. Let me drop it over here. And we see that if we see the numbers by product key, we can select and drop and make it lengthier. Okay. So even if we take a look at this by putting another key as a product key, we are getting the right number. Quantity sold, which is which is a measure and or the quantity which is a column, we have exactly the same numbers, right? So that is the benefit I'm talking about of creating a measure because it is not adding up into your file size and it will help you to com compute faster, like your overall report will be much faster. Now, if we take a look at quick measure, let us click over here. And we see that this pop-up box comes up and we have a couple of in, inbuilt quick me like inbuilt measures available on using inbuilt function like average per category, variance, max, min. But uh, I don't use it much. It is for me it is easier to create it uh, directly instead of using the inbuilt functions. So I don't use it. You are free to use it. Average, variance, max, min, the by default it is uh, sum. Okay. Okay, guys. This concludes our measures and uh, edit add columns. I'll see you in the next session. Thank you. Hi, hey guys. Welcome to the next session. Let's uh, let's work toward uh, creating our uh, visualization. But before that, we need to write uh, add a couple of. Uh, uh, columns just to make sure that we are thorough with the query and the functions operators which are available in Power BI. Uh, need not to worry because most of the functions are very similar to the functions that we have in other tools of uh, Microsoft, for example, Excel. Right now, let me let me open Excel. Now, if you take a look, let me write few of the operators that we have available. So of course, plus, minus, multiply, and uh, di division, and exponent, which is on numeric six, okay? So these are the arithmetic operators. And if you look at, uh, let me write, These are arithmetic operators. And if we, we have also a couple of, uh, let's, let's take a look at uh, comparison operators. Okay. Some of the com uh, easiest co or the most commonly used comparison operators are equal. So, sorry. Oh. Okay, I can't write equal like this. So equal, 
and we have greater than sign less than and uh, greater than e greater than equal to and uh, less than equal to and we have not equal to and if you look at few more uh, comparisons then uh, couple of uh, let's look let's look at logical operations I'm, I'm covering things that we are going to use most widely, okay? Because this list will just, just go on. There is a percentage sign also, correct? We did not use that. For comparison also, there are multiple more signs, um, logic operations. So, and, so of course, and is used, uh, or ampersand is used to concatenate two values, okay? To produce one text string. And if you use, to ampersand, then it creates and condition. Let me write and and if we have two pipes, this is just above the enter sign on a laptop. And if you use two pipes, then it is or condition. And if we use in, then it creates a logical or condition based on a given list by using the curly bracket. Okay, let me write here. Or condition with curly bracket. Now I myself have lost <laughs> where the curly bracket is. Okay, I don't know where the hell is curly bracket in my laptop. But I'm talking about this is a small bracket and okay, I get it. <laughs> um, curly bracket is just the same key, which is the bigger bracket. Okay. Big bracket is this one. If you press shift, this is the curly bracket. Okay. So these are some of the, some of the op uh, operators that we will be using. And if you look at a couple of uh, functions now, when I say couple of functions, let's take a look at uh, math function. Okay, um, like some average, max, min, divide, count, count A, correct, um, count rows, Um, count rows, but count rows, you, I don't know if you'll be using it uh, often, uh, but another one is distant count. Distant count. And if you look at the more logical functions, remember these are operators, these are functions. Now logical functions like if, don't mind my caps and small alphabets and or not switch true true i'm using true false more than switch let me put it down and uh, we can take some look at text functions now the most common text function you're going to use is what concatenate concatenate, format, left, right, and mid, right? Upper, lower, proper, oh, spelling up and what up the lower, proper, len. These, if, if you're thorough with Excel, you would have realized that all all the functions and operators I'm writing 99% are from Excel, correct? Len and what else? Search, like find and uh, replace. I'm just trying to recreate what are more function. Substitute, trim, trim you'll be using, right? 
and uh, let's look at filter a filter is like all all ex except and related and related table distinct values earlier earliest what else is filter and user relationship mm, not able to recall more but filter itself once there filter calculate wrong spelling and uh, date and time date and time date and time is something that is very complex to use unless until we have a thorough understanding so we i'll start my examples with the date and time itself okay now for date and time example is like date diff like date difference correct year month day and same like our minute not adding for second and uh, today today now these are all excel functions which i'm writing by the way and week day week numeric or week number hmm okay what else can we use yeah these are the ones that i can recall on the top of my mind let's let's use few and uh, let's have take some example okay here it is so let's start with let's go to the date column and uh, let's go to calendar i'm already in calendar let's assume that we are going to write the another key so another column if i need to add i go to i go to home and i need to add a new column let's wait for a while okay new column is added so this is my um uh, function name or parameter name let me call it day of week so let me make it caps day of the week day of the week equals weekday so weekday is a function so returns so if you see the interest is giving us what this function is going to do returns and returns number a number from 1 to 7 identifying the day of the week of the date let's press k so let's what i'm trying to find out i'm trying to find out which day it is okay so weekday you see i can actually press tab weekday right date calling the function weekday the column is date but which like do i need to write another function date or do i need to add the column i need to add the column so i can use the up arrow and press tab so it has already picked up the date column from the calendar table correct and i put a comma and it tells me that return type 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 is 7 one means my day is starting or my week is starting on sunday two means my week is starting on monday so i am going with two assuming or not assuming making my week uh, starts at or starts from monday and i press tab and i 
close the parenthesis and I hit enter. It will be rolling up. Now you see it tells me that 1st January 2016 was the 5th day. Right? It was a Friday. So Friday it shows the 5th day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Right? Now let us say we could have actually done it using the extract function also. Right? Let me take you back to customers table. Now if you remember in the customers table we had extracted year. Birth year of the customer where it's gone. Okay, did we not extract birth year? Okay, never mind. We can we can do it now. So we can actually go to transform data and we can extract the birth year from here. But let's not do that. Uh, let's write a query. Let write let's write a basic query and try to extract the birth year from the birth date table. Sorry, not birth date table, birth date column. So last time we added a column by click on new column. Let me this time right click and click on new column. And let me write, let me name this column as birth year equals birth year equals year and of which column, right? That is birth date. So when I write birth date, it automatically tells me that birth date is in customers. If I had one more column birth date in some other table, it would have shown me two options. Right now I have only one. I can hit tab and I can close the bracket and I can either hit enter or I can click on this checkbox. I have been hitting enter, so let me click on checkbox just to give you a demo. It's working. Now you see, we have 1975 for the first person and it's right here, 1975. This is how easy it is. Okay, I see in the previous session, we had uh, added these columns, text before delimiter, but let's rename it. We, I think we had forgotten it to rename. And this is actually username. If you remember, we extracted it from the email ID. Okay, and text between delimiter. This was, if you remember, we extracted this also from the email ID. And right click, rename. This is our domain name. Okay, it's working. Now let's let's assume that we want to we want to find out what is the current age of the person right so i can add a new column i will of course try to find out the age from the birth date itself now i have a new column um, let me call it current age okay and uh, if i need to find out the current age i need to actually find out the difference in between the date on which he was born and today, right? I need to find out the difference in between the dates. So of course, the function that I'm going to use is date diff. So I, even if you're not sure which function you are going to, you are supposed to use, just write something that comes on your mind. Uh, of course, the logical is date. So just write date and you see there are so many dates right here. So I know you will be Right here, you'll be slightly confused whether you're going to use date difference, date diff, or dates between. Never mind. You will still be able to make one step progress, right? So date diff, and I need to pull the birth date, right? Now you see, as soon as I type birth, there are two columns which starts with birth, birth date and birth year, which and both of them are in the customer's table. I need to. Uh, highlight birth date using the arrow, up and down arrow, and hit tab for birth date. 
it has selected and date difference right so what is the second date second date is today today is one of the easiest function that you use you just open the parenthesis and close the parenthesis done it will just give you a today's date i can actually close the parenthesis and close the close the equation by default if i'll do that by default like i close it and i hit enter it's done by default it will give me actually i need to put comma and then close by default it will give me the number of days from the date day he was born till today but i don't want to use that i don't want my answer in that unit i want my answer in year unit so i use a down arrow go to year hit tab and then i close the parenthesis and i hit enter working on it all right so we have created current age the age of the first person he was born in 1975 uh, till today it is 45 years uh, my date you did might be different if you are let's say if you are seeing seeing this um in the future and using my uh, data so you have a different date over here but this is how you are we are using uh, this date diff function to find out uh, the difference between the dates now you see we have under the customer table over here in the right we have birth year and current age added and these two if you realize these are the two two things that we have just added correct birth year and current age now let us say that you're working in hill packard and it recently launched a pocket printer and the marketing team has decided to to sell uh, the target market for this pocket printer is the people who have kids right so how do you know people who have kids are not in this overall table so so we know that people who have kids is like i can drill down to to 7 but let's assume that there are there are people who have no kids right i can actually transform the data and replace 3 with 0 so that we have 0 as well but let's assume that there are people who have 0 0 kids so, uh, but i want to create a binary kind of uh, uh, column uh, yes and no so that i can uh, easily create my uh, distribution list uh for our uh, marketing campaign so let's let's try to create one um i go to home and i click on new column in a similar way that we have done earlier and uh, which function will we use so we will use uh if function but the name of this uh, new column is let's say parents okay and if of course if total children so our our column name is total children right so i use a arrow so if total children which is in the customer table we are already in the customer table if total children in the customer table is greater than 0 return me yes otherwise return me a no this guy is not a parent and hit enter working on it okay yes so we have all yes because each and every guy has one of the other kid so otherwise if we had any guy who had zero i just cannot replace it right away <laughs> just like excel i cannot just type zero and replace it so if we had a zero over here we would have seen a no over here so this is how we use the logical function okay now let's assume that the marketing team says that they want to target these parents with the marketing campaign only on weekend right only on weekend now let's go back to the calendar table and we see that weekend is on day 6 and day 7 right so we need to create another logical uh, function uh, where if it is 6 and 7 means saturday and sunday it should it should throw me 
as weekend or if it is one to five, it should throw me weekday. But if I, if I will write one to five weekday, then I will be writing five logics. Instead of that, I will write two logics for six and seven. If it is not satisfying six and seven, it will, it will throw like the negative value. It is a weekday. So instead of writing five logic, I'll write two logics. So how do we do it? Again, quick way, easy. Let's go to here. Let's add a new column. And we will be using combination of two functions. One is uh, if, another one is or. And what do we call it? Like, let's call it weekend, weekend uh, column or weekend variable. Just maybe just call it weekend. And if, and we want, we don't, we are not going to give only just one logic, right? We are going to give two logics. So we need to use or, okay? Now, what is our logic one? Our logic one is if the day of the week, right? So this column, day of the week, day of week, like this, is equal to Saturday, which is six, or, so comma, or if day of week is equal to Sunday, which is seven, right? Now here, let me close the bracket. Here I'm closing my or statement. So if you see, this automatically is highlighted. So I'm closing this or statement. If day of week is six or if day of week is seven, means if it is Saturday or Sunday, then return me what? Then return me weekend. Correct? If not, return me what? Week day. So this way, let me close it. So now if you see, I can click on check. Working on it. Now you see for five, I get a weekday for six and seven, I'm getting weekend. So this is how we are, we will be combining the two functions and uh, building the required data field that we require. Now, let us write the similar kind of function by using the pipe delimiter. Oh, we're not going to delimit things. Uh, like the two pi function, uh, which is which also functions as or. Let me help you understand. Let's go to home. Let's add another column, and let's call this as what weekend one or weekend five. Just an example that we can underscore five because we are going to use this function. Let me do control V. Okay, clear. So we wrote the name of this name of this uh, column that we are going to use. If, but here, I'm not going to use or. After if, date of the week, if date of the week is six, correct? If it's equal to six, no, then not comma, then, double pipe, which is actually the logical test. And then similarly, we have calendar of calendar of the week. If it is seven, actually I have this, but does it have to go? It has to go. It has to go. Calendar day of week. Okay. Let me type this. Off. Day of week. <laughs> I, th I think it should have been easier if we had just written from the starting. Day of week is equal to weekend 
and weekday. Is equal to what? Is equal to 7. Correct. Let me fix it. So I just added the word 5 over here just to remove any kind of confusion and taking care and hit enter. So basically, if you see, it's a weekday, weekday, weekend, 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 weekend. So basically, it's exactly the same way. Instead of uh, writing or here and then writing the entire formula, uh, what we did is we wrote the first logic and then we put a double five, and then we wrote the second logic. And then if it's set, uh, satisfying this, it's weekend. If not, it's weekday. Correct? I let it be like this. Let me also save the file. Now, let us say that um, in the customer field, we had created the full name. So if you see, we had we were provided with prefix first name and last name. Okay, but what we did now in our data transformation session, we created the full name of the person using the merge statement. Correct. But what if, what if I want to write the query, dex query and create the full name? So you know it by now, let's go to home, let's click on new column. So of course, just like Excel, we will be using the concatenate function. So what do we call it? Let's, let me call it again, full name. And let me write, concatenate okay just to differentiate between this and this or i can i can of course not create two columns with the same exact name so what are we, what we are going to do is so for concatenation we i'm going to use the ampersand so i want to add what i want to add prefix right so I just write prefix here it is i press the tab and i press and okay now let me tell you that if I directly type full name and I press a tab, what is going to happen is it's going to create my full name with the prefix, the first name and the last name without any space. So I need to add the space manually. So what I do is I add a space and then I press ampersand, oops, ampersand and I type what? First name. First name and uh, and space and what last name and then i close the bracket and i hit enter something is wrong i have a red mark over here okay let's capture this i had not started the parenthesis but i closed it click on checkbox like check mark I had an error earlier, but it is fixed now. You see, I have misses, then which was a prefix, and then I have a space, which is this is space that we added, then the first name, and then space in the last name. Okay, so this is how we use the concatenate function. Now, let us say that I want to pull just the first three characters of this full name, right? So of course, if you are, but let's say that I want to count how many characters are there. So of course, if you're using Excel, you'll just say, hey, let's go ahead and use len. But yeah, you can do that over here. But what if I just want the first three characters from the left or the last three characters from the right? So of course, what will, what will you do in, in Excel? You will use left and right and you will define the number of characters that you want. So exactly, we are going to do the, do the same thing over here. But instead of pulling the name, let me pull it from the right calendar. Let me create, let me shorten this name one. So let me add a new column. Okay, my column is added. Let's say that I want month, um, month what? Short name, short, short month. Or yeah, short month okay 
and uh, what I want, I want from the left, right? I want from left of, okay, what is the name of this column? The name of this column is month name. So I want from left, from in this column, I want from left three characters. So I write left month, so month name, okay. And how many characters do I want? I put comma, so it, it automatically asks me how many characters do you want? Just, just like in Excel, I say I need three characters and I close the parentheses and I hit enter. Okay, so you see, I've got, let me click on this inverted arrow, so I've got all, all three. Now, this is in proper case. Now, let's assume that I want everything in the upper case. So it's pretty easy. What will you do in Excel? Exactly, you just going to write upper and close the entire equation over here and you click on this check. Okay, you see it's working. You must be wondering that why I keep saying that what will you do in Excel because I want you to think think that way. If you have come on Power BI, I'm assuming that you're already a master in Excel. So if you are stuck somewhere in Power BI and you don't know what to do before going on to Bing, ask. If you are stuck doing the same thing in Excel, what will you do? Now, if, if you remember, uh, we had actually uh, done the similar kind of thing uh, doing in during the data transformation in our second session, right? I'm just giving you another way how to do the similar kind of thing, right? I could have just used capitalized function. You remember? Capitalize uh, under format. I could have just used the same thing under transform data like edit query, but I'm just giving you a different way of doing the same thing. I, at the end, it will also, of course, depend completely on you that which way you want to go. I'm just enabling you with different ways of doing the same thing. Now, let us say that we need to use VLOOKUP, right? So VLOOKUP we use to pull data from some other table on the basis of a common key, right? So let us say, let's take a, let's collapse this, let's collapse this. Let's go to sales table and let us say I want the product price over here. I don't have a product price over here. I want the product price so that I can calculate the overall revenue for each product key. So if you see, we have so many product keys but I don't know what is the price of this particular product key. Now, if you go back to the relationship, we see my sales is connected to my product. If I hover on the relationship or data pipeline, it's basis of product key. So on the basis of product key, I can actually pull the data. So I need to do a VLOOKUP, but the VLOOKUP in here in Power BI is called related. Now, you know the drill, I can click on new column. And let me call this column as price, protect price, um, related, um, Product price under related, and that's equal to related, right? There's a tab, and from where I need to pull, I need to pull the product price from the product table, right? So I write product, product price, from the product table. So I can just press tab 
and I can close the parenthesis and I hit enter. Now you see I have for 352 it is 2071. So let me write for 352 it is 2071 just cross checking and uh, for 358 it is 2049 for 358 it is 2049 now what we can do is we can go to products table and we can see for product key 352 and 358 for 352 Product price 2071 and uh, for 358 it's 2049 right here right so this is how easy it is to use related uh, instead of VLOOKUP in Excel Let's referencing state power polyp. Now let me go back to sales table and uh, let me give you a demo of a mathematical equation. Let me add a new column and let me call this new column as uh, revenue. Let me Let me call it or gaps. Let me call it revenue. And what I want to do is, if I want the revenue, I need to multiply the total quantity as sold with the price. So my total quantity is order quantity here, right? So let's assume that I don't remember it's order quantity. Let me let me let's think that I remember quantity. So let me write quantity. So if I write quantity, you see it is already suggesting me that. I have three parameters. One is the quantity sold, which is the measure that we created. You see the calculator mark? And then we have order quantity. So in the sales table, I use this. And I put a multiplication sign as simple as that. And multiplying with what? I'm multiplying it with our price that we just created, correct? So that is product price related. And I hit enter, I can just click on, click on my check mark. So you see, we have the revenue. Now, let us, we can actually select this and I can hit on a dollar sign right here and reduce the decimal. Can click here or I can change the currency from here to dollar from here and I can reduce the decimal sign decimal figure to one done all right uh, we need not for this specific uh, change we need to go to query editor tool uh, or transformation table I can we can just do the basic formatting over here, right here. Okay, let's go back here. All right, now we will be focusing a little more on uh, mathematical functions, just like the way we calculated the revenue. Let's let's calculate. We have quantity sold in order quantity, which is the same field. We in the last 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 session we. Uh, took a demo, right? Now let's say I want to add another column with quantity. Okay, I want to I want to insert a measure. So instead of using the modeling field, I know if I add a measure from here, it will assign that into the very first data table. So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign that in my returns table because it's more related to returns, uh, new measure. 
and let me call this measure as quantity return and it will be as simple as sum of return quantity correct so let's close and so if you see it shows that I created a measure over here but measure will not be visible unless or until I drag that into my visualization and you see I have the returns for product key 204 sorry 214 I have 70 now let us add another another measure in sales as revenue so we already have revenue let me add total revenue total revenue will be sum of revenue I hit a tab and I use a bracket and I Let's check now if you remember you must be thinking we already had revenue why did we add revenue again so let me drag this revenue that we had created over there now you see it is 73,000 and if I show you total revenue Is the same number the only difference is this revenue which we had created earlier is implicit and this total revenue is explicit and I can use it in a, with reference to the other table as well okay so this revenue which we had created earlier is actually going to increase the file size but this is not going to increase the file size now let us say let us increase this with too much okay now let us say I want to format this so easier way of doing it is let's select total revenue over here and I get this little formatting tool over here I can come dollar sign you can see it's done and I can reduce it to I hit a tab and uh, working on it. Then I can drag this from the towards the right. Okay. So yeah, it looks pretty clear. So this is how we have to proceed. Let us say that we want to create another measure for returns rate we want to see what is the rate of return okay so let's name it as return rate and easiest way of doing it is it's like quantity return divided by quantity sold enter you see we need to drag it on the right okay now it's right here click this return rate I can Drop at the end, we have the return rate right here. But let's format it. To format this, I can click on this measure that we created and make it percentage. Wow, and I want it just at one decimal. Hit a tab. Cool, 3.3% is the return rate. Let us uh, 
let's create a couple of redundant columns okay look at the field so quantity sold let us skip that let's remove order quantity okay and uh, let's keep quantity returned revenue total revenue let's keep return rates revenue total revenue so let's remove revenue all right it's pretty simple now let's remove the product key i don't want the delete of the product key let's see that let's use a snowflake till now we have not used let me drag category name and see how it works so excluded by new closings we have the numbers so our uh, data model snowflake data model is working fine let's uh, let's add average retail price we don't have that so the right measure or the right table to add the average retail price is the product tip. I can right click, you can right, you can right click anywhere, but I have a habit of clicking on the head, uh, on the name of the table. Let me add a new measure. And uh, let me call it average retail price. And of course that will depend upon the product price, which is in the product table. So let me write product price, or I can write price. Okay, let me write. Okay, I need to do the function first, right? I want the average price. So you see that if I just write price, it's not suggesting anything. So I need to write average, and then I then let me write price and see what it suggests. Okay, it is suggesting correctly that price is in two tables and these three instances. I want the product price. Then I hit tab and I close the parenthesis and I hit enter. Scrolling. All right. Now let's go ahead and pull this right over here. Wow. Now you see that we have an extra component, like components over here, apart from accessories by clothing and component. The reason being why we did not have this last category is because this particular category does not exist in in sales table, does not exist in retail uh, sorry return table. That is why it was not showing over here. We did not sell any of the uh, component category. As we did not sell anything, there was no return on that. So this particular category did not even exist in sales table or in return table, but it did exists in the product table and it had a price and that's why when we calculate the average we have a fourth category which is components and right right here now let us average return price let's format this so dollar sign oh one decimal tab okay cool it looks fine now let's do one thing let me show you what if we have a category name right now if i pull the subcategory name right under this you see there is a plus sign over here if i click on the plus sign this is exactly working like uh, like pivot. I can click on the category and I see all the subcategories under it. The bike racks, bike stands, auto in cages. If I click on bike, sorry, if I click on bike, I have the subcategories under that mountain bike, road bike, trail bike. Right? So this is how we are we need to progress. Now let me remove the subcategory from here. And we are back. So it is as simple as that. We can just pull the subcategory back here. We can pull the product name also under this. See, I can click on the plus sign. Then, so from subcategory, some from category, we have these subcategories. And under this subcategory, bike racks, I have this product. Isn't that pretty cool? 
it functioning exactly like we want. Now, some time back, we calculated the quantity return. Okay. Now, let me remove this subcategory name for now. We calculated quantity return. So, this is the total number of quantity which was returned. Maybe just one percent, or yeah, maybe for just one, there's just one row item which contains 269 return item, or they can be 269 rows with single item in each, right? Let us assume that we need to know how many row items are there, correct? It can be either equal to or less than 269. It cannot be more than 269. And if, if at all there is more than 269, in some weird case, it must be containing blank, correct? Because the sum has to be equal to 269. Now, let me add that measure again under the best place is return. Let me add a measure. And uh, this measure will, of course, be count, right? So I need to count total returns. So let me type. I will write total returns count. That's equal to count what? I want to count the number of rows, right? I want to count the number of rows of returns. Let me type it again. Let me let me drag and drop it over here. Okay. Now what we have is two sixty nine. So two sixty seven times clothing is returned. Of course, there are one or two people who return more than more than one. That's why it's two sixty nine. And Another way of doing it is I can just go to this text, this measure, and we know that there are no blank items uh, if there cannot be any blank rows. So I can count the same thing just by using the count function. Okay, I need to fix this. Return quantity. Okay, so if I close, check this. See, we'll be getting the same number. I okay. Let's select this. Total returns quantity. So total return count you see is exactly the same. Correct? There is another function. If I use count A, if A working on it, you see it didn't change. The reason being count rows count and count a is giving us the same result because there are no blanks count a count is counting all the numeric fields count a is counting numeric as well as characters in a real world scenario the developers will be putting a condition where only numbers will be allowed not not characters so you will not come across a situation where you have to use count a uh, but i was just giving you a demo hope this helps in the same way, we can actually count the distinct count as, as well, right? But let's take another example of, uh, let's add one more measure in the sales. Let's add a measure. And let's name it total orders. And we want to 
we want to calculate the distinct distinct orders okay for that we need to type distinct count distinct count not blank and what order number right order number and then close enter now what is the name i typed and forgot total orders okay let us track let me use this this and bring it down let's track total orders right underneath here without side and we have total orders over here these are the distinct orders now if you observe this total order 16,000, 13,000, 6,000 if we add that it's around 36,000 but here we are seeing 25 is because uh, it, it wouldn't add this is a separate island and this is a separate island in Power BI this is actually our distinct count right if we click on, click on total order this is a distinct count so this is these are the distinct numbers so that is why it will not add to 25 correct 